Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for St. Albert and Mitten. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise in strong support of Bill C-230, the Protection of Freedom of Conscience Act, uh, introduced by my friend, the member for Carlton Trail, Eagle Creek. Uh, this is much needed legislation to protect the charter rights of medical professionals who conscientiously object to providing or otherwise participating in medical assistance in dying. I want to commend the member for her steadfast leadership in championing conscience rights and for bringing this bill back to this House as she introduced a similar bill that died on the order paper in the last Parliament. Madam Speaker, medical assistance in dying raises profound legal, moral, and ethical questions. As the trial judge in the Carter decision, which struck down the criminal code prohibition against physician-assisted death, stated, quote, thoughtful and well-motivated people can have come to different conclusions about whether physician-assisted death can be ethically justifiable, closed quote. That is true of patients, and it is true of medical professionals. Medical professionals have a duty to do what is in the best interests of their patients and to provide the best possible advice based upon their judgment and experience, all of which are grounded on moral and professional convictions. Madam Speaker, when we talk about participating in medical assistance in dying, there are professional, moral, and ethical considerations of the highest weight. In the Carter decision, the Supreme Court predicated its decision on two things, a willing patient and, as importantly, a willing physician. At paragraph 132 of the Carter decision, the Court said nothing in its pronouncement uh, would compel uh, medical professionals to participate in MAID. The Court went further in stating, quote, however, we note in addressing the topic of physician participation that a physician's decision to participate in assisted dying is a matter of conscience and, in some cases, religious belief, closed quote. Uh, in other words, again, a willing patient and a willing physician. Now, there are those who would say that this legislation is redundant, that it's not needed, uh, that in terms of medical assistance in dying, conscience rights of medical professionals are already protected. Uh, they would point to the pronouncement in Carter. Uh, they might also cite Bill C-14, which includes a, a preamble that expressly recognizes conscience rights, as well as a for greater certainty clause in the criminal code that simply provides that for greater certainty no one shall be compelled to provide MAID. While the intention of Parliament was to protect the conscience rights of medical professionals when C-14 was debated and passed, and I was there for that debate and actively participated in that debate and in the study of that bill at committee, in practice, conscience protections and rights of medical professionals are not being respected across Canada. Uh, there is a gap, and it's why at the Justice Committee when Bill C-7 was studied, uh, we heard from medical professionals who expressed serious concerns about pressure and coercion in providing MAID. Indeed, the Ontario Medical Association wrote to our committee 
specifically calling on the committee to amend Bill C-7 to provide greater conscience protections for medical professionals, uh, given that the For Greater Certainty Clause, although better than nothing, simply doesn't have teeth. It's not enforceable. And in that context, while the criminal code does not compel a medical professional to provide MAID, there is nothing in the criminal code that specifically protects medical professionals when they are pressured or coerced to provide MAID. This bill addresses that. It closes that gap by establishing two targeted offenses, namely uh, that it is an offense to intimidate or coerce a medical professional in providing or participating in MAID, and secondly, that it is an offense to dismiss or refuse to hire a medical professional solely on the grounds that they object to participating in MAID. Madam Speaker, while this legislation protects the rights of medical professionals, it must also be emphasized that this bill just as much protects the rights of patients. Madam Speaker, this bill protects the rights of patients by protecting the physician-patient relationship and by safeguarding the ability of medical professionals to provide their best advice and judgment to a patient who is considering medical assistance in dying free of pressure and free of coercion. It protects patients by protecting their right to a second opinion. Uh, there can be no second opinion, or at least a guarantee of a second opinion, in the face of coercion or pressure to provide medical assistance in dying. There can be no second opinion when the only choice offered to a patient is medical assistance in dying as a result of pressure and coercion. Madam Speaker, the need to safeguard the patient-physician relationship, and this bill uh, works towards achieving that, is all the more needed uh, in the face of the radical expansion of medical assistance in dying in Canada with the passage of Bill C-7 that removes critical safeguards, including the criterion that death be reasonably foreseeable and that opens the door to medical assistance in dying for persons who are suffering solely from a mental illness, even though it is never possible to predict when someone who is suffering from mental illness can get better. It is never possible to predict irremediability in the case of sole mental illness. And as a result of a removal of those critical safeguards, the uh, vulnerability of patients is put at greater risk. And so, Madam Speaker, when the conscience rights of medical professionals to exercise their best judgment is protected free of intimidation and coercion, the rights of patients is equally protected. Uh, Madam Speaker, this is a timely, targeted, necessary piece of legislation that protects the rights of medical professionals 
and their charter rights and the rights of patients, I urge its passage.